Now, it was a moment that shaped modern Taiwan. Ten years ago, hundreds of students seized control of parliament, while hundreds of thousands more joined demonstrations of support on the streets. Their protest helped stop a planned trade pact with China that they said could leave Taiwan vulnerable to coercion by Beijing. DW's James Chater spoke with some of those who took part. A decade ago, hundreds of students storming Taiwan's legislature. The occupation of the building lasted more than three weeks. Through song and chant, they expressed anger at a planned trade pact with China. Leaders, including this man, Lin Feifan, said it was passed without cross-party scrutiny and could leave Taipei vulnerable to economic pressure from China, which claims sovereignty over Taiwan. It was named the Sunflower Movement, after the flower became the symbol of the students' calls for greater transparency. The pact it targeted was eventually scrapped. Also feels like, uh, it's just yesterday. Revisiting the legislative building for the first time since the occupation, Lin Feifan tells us the movement was a turning point in Taiwan's political history. I think originally that uh, Taiwan's relations uh, with China has usually been decided by a small group of political elite. But the Sunflower Movement break out that symbolized that Taiwanese people have the desire to decide uh, our relationship with China by ourselves. In power at the time was the KMT a Taiwanese party which then and now favors closer economic ties with China. But at every presidential election since, they've lost to the now ruling DPP. In 2019, Lin joined the DPP, which has tried to wean Taiwan's economy off Beijing's influence. But because of the Sunflower Movement, so all the integrations, the agenda has been stopped by the Taiwanese people. Uh, so that's quite pivotal uh, for, uh, for the transit of our, our, our relations with the world. Then, though, the world was largely looking elsewhere. Mostly a deadly protest happening at the same time in Ukraine. There, protesters faced a similar set of questions, move closer to their authoritarian neighbor or chart their own democratic future. Indeed, Russia's annexation of Crimea, triggered by the protests in Ukraine, was formalized on March the 18th, 2014, the exact day protesters in Taipei stormed the legislature. In Taiwan, the Sunflower Movement marked the emergence of a new political generation. Li Chang'ai was just nine years old when she, with her parents, joined hundreds of thousands on this Taipei street in support of the students. Now at university herself, she says the Sunflower Movement continues to shape her view of Taiwan's future. Lots of people will think, on our own, what power do we have? Even if there's 100 people, what power do we have? If the government wants to do something, they can do it. That's why it was such a moving moment. It showed if we work together, we can change our society. It showed Taiwan belongs to us. A majority of Taiwanese don't want unification with China, despite Beijing ramping up military pressure on Taipei in recent years. And for many here, the importance they attach to Taiwan's autonomy, even in the face of such threats, was seeded in the Sunflower Movement 10 years ago. And I'm joined now by DW's uh, Taipei correspondent, James Chater, who filed that report for us. Um, James, tell us, how did those who were involved in this movement look back at that moment 10 years ago? Well, it was really interesting going back to that legislative building with Lin Feifan, one of the students, leaders of that protest. It was the first time, as I mentioned in that report, that he'd been back to that building since the occupation. I think there were really a set of conflicting and complicated emotions. But one of the things he did say is that even though he was someone that was eventually prosecuted, actually, eventually acquitted for his role in the occupation, was able to revisit that legislative building, really shows the strength of Taiwan's democracy. But as with any movement like this, there's, of course, a contest over the legacy. I think there are some within Taiwan that would make the case that Taiwan's economy would have been better off with a bit of deeper engagement with Beijing. Um, but what participants in the Sunflower Movement, I think, were really able to do is shift the dial um, on the conversation, really, around Taiwan's economic relations with Beijing and draw attention to the potential dangers for Taiwan's sovereignty if they continue down that path of continued economic integration with China. And, James, how were Taiwanese politics and, in particular, perceptions of China in Taiwan today, how were they shaped by the sunflower protests? 
Yeah, well, I think to understand the situations today, you really have to understand the context in which the Sunflower Movement was born. This was a time when you'd had almost eight years of the KMT in power. This was a party that favours closer economic ties with China. And under that administration, you'd seen um, a slew of really of economic plans, people-to-people exchange, exchanges plans that was designed to bring Taiwan closer to China, so much so that international observers, even in the weeks leading up to these protests, were saying that it might not be too much longer before China, sorry, Taiwan was eventually subsumed by China. So, um, of course, Taiwan remains now an autonomous, self-governing democracy. Um, that party that was in power during the Sunflower Movement has yet to win a presidential election since. That being said, though, this, this policy of weaning Taiwan off China's economic influence under the now ruling DPP has encountered struggles. China remains Taiwan's largest economic partner. And in that sense, although the, the Sunflower Movement protests we were able to move the dial on this question, it still, it still didn't really completely resolve the question mm -hmm. of how Taiwan should manage its relations with Beijing. I did just want to ask you, you talked in your report about parallels with Ukraine. Given everything that's happened since, does that comparison resonate even more strongly with, with people in Taiwan now? Br briefly, if you could, James. Yeah, well, I think this was one of the really interesting things about reporting out this story um, is that so many of the kind of uh, international observers are really not that aware of what happened during this sunflower movement. And I think that really speaks to the, the importance of the Ukraine protesters at, at the time, which were facing a very similar set of questions. The fate that's befallen Ukraine in the time since, of course, gives Taiwan very much um, pause for, for thought. Um, but also, you know, you've had in that last 10 years Xi Jinping centralizing power in, in China. And the threat of conflict between Taiwan and China has not dissolved and in any, in any kind of um, analysis of the situation has got greater. And so that's why, again, this, this sunflower movement, although a really important moment in Taiwan's political history, still remains contested. DW's James Chater in Taipei. Thanks so much, James.